That's the uh, title track from the CD, Hollywood Boulevard, and it's uh, Raul in the big time. Raul Benja is my guest uh, in uh, studio. Give me a list of the uh, names of the, uh, again, what you told me, the, the list of the musicians well, on, this, on this particular cut. On this track, I've got uh, the great Junior Watson, who's an incredibly legendary guitar player out of California, Fred Kaplan, who was uh, telling me about how he was at T-Bone Walker's funeral, uh, Richard Innes, who's kind of the one of the great uh, modern blues drummers. And then on bass is the legendary Larry the Mole Taylor. Now Larry was, uh, and still is, the bass player for Canned Heat. So when you see that footage from Woodstock of this bearded, balding 20 year old. What was their big hit, Canned Heat? That song, I can't, I, can't, I can never recall the name, but it's on TV all the time. Where he's singing in falsetto. Da, 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 da. Singing in falsetto. Again. Yeah. yeah. They got on sing. the road again. On the road again. Could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Something yeah. like that. They got I, that groove down. That they, they have, they have a patent on that groove. I think. Well, you, much. you, of course, yeah. you sort of went for that original sound too, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. We, you did. Uh, we tried to go for a real. I mean, most of the big time recordings over the years have been live off the floor on two inch tape, uh, no headphones. You know, mm -hmm. we just play in the room all together. And when I was in California doing that particular session with that band. I really wanted to have that experience of actually playing with all these heroes of mine. I didn't want it to be like, I'm going to email you the track and just lay in here. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. no, that's, it's because it's I might, this might, I've done a couple gigs with that band over the years uh, that I've been down in California, but, you know, whenever you're in that kind of company, it's sort of a special occasion. So, yeah, I want to actually experience it, you know, and mm -hmm. feel it. And blues, you know, you got to play it live to know what it is. So, who do you listen to? Well, you know, it's funny. I, my whole life, I've just really been a blues addict. Like I, I like uh, I, I like a lot of the music that was recorded in the 1950s and, and early 60s because I think I love the way it was recorded. So I just love that kind of sound, whether it's bluegrass, uh, country music, gospel music of that period, jazz of that period, rock and roll of that period. I just and, and I really love the sound of the upright bass. So the upright bass was still a component of a lot of those different styles. So mm -hmm. I, I listen to a lot of that stuff. And there's a lot of great contemporary blues uh, performers and. You know, we got great people here in town and uh, like jazz too. But yeah, I, I, I really love that period of like the classic Chicago blues sound, the early work of Muddy Waters, Sonny Boy Williamson, Little Walter. I love all that stuff. I love the uh, the, the, the first line of, of, of your bio because when I read it over, I thought, okay, this looks like somebody trying to uh, name drop as many nationalities <laughs> and cities and countries as possible. Listen to this. This is Barbara Okay. Born in Manchester to a South Asian father, an Irish mother, Grew up in Ottawa and Bonn, Germany. <laughs> there you right. go, man. The United Nations, right there. You got it. That's a kid, that, that, and that would, of course, with that bio, it of course explains why I'm so deeply passionate about blues. blues. Absolutely. 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 Well, you were a big fan of Blind Lemon Jello. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a fascinating background to begin with. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, my parents were, were in the kind of, uh, it wasn't as common in Canada in the, in the late 60s for, for an Irish woman and a South Asian guy to get together. And they were both new immigrants to Canada in the 60s. Mom had come to work for the Irish Tourist Board in Montreal. And Dad had come to, you know, with five bucks in his pocket to try to come for university. He was an engineer who never wanted to be an engineer. Like every, every kid in India from the middle class yeah. was either like, you got to be a doctor or an engineer. So my dad went, built a road in Bhutan and almost died and then was like, get me out here. And he went to Carleton University and studied journalism. He did his B.A. in journalism. So, you know, really? I, yeah. And he, you know, he used to work at Woolworths as like a janitor. And then, you know, it's a total immigrant story. Yeah. And then as the years went on, I ended up in Bonn, Germany, because my dad was one of the first South Asian Canadian diplomats. He was a diplomat for Canada. You know, and I look back now and think, OK, what have I done in 20 years? Well, I've been in a few plays. I put out a few records. And I think, man, my dad was like vacuum and floors at Woolworths, and then he was a Canadian diplomat, that's, like, that's by this hot. age. And I'm like, how the hell? <laughs> how do you do that? Yeah, stuff? man, i got to put out a couple more. See, i got to get on a few more TV now, shows. Did, did, have you all been back to India at all? You know, I haven't been back to India for almost 30 years because really? so many of my relatives moved here. They, mm -hmm. My dad was the first from his family to come, and then many followed. Well, I think we should all move to India. Well, hey, it's, they, got, they got a stronger economy now, yeah, and uh, the, some people there are making way more money than we're making over here. Yeah. But but it's funny because uh, no one from my Irish, you know, Irish the island people, man. My mom was the only one who came from Ireland. Everybody else stayed in Ireland. So this summer, uh, my my wife's just to keep the international stuff going. My wife's from Norway, 
So we're going to Norway. <laughs> my kids are a real interesting mix. So my kids are going to the Nor Norway for the first time this summer with us, and we're going to Ireland to have sort of like the family heritage. Let's go back and meet all the cousins trip. So yeah. that's happening this summer. But do you it's have a deal. do you have a big Indian family here? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And you're lots all, of cousins and aunts and uncles. So you keep the Ottoman culture run going. Yeah, we're all you know we're Fantastic. all close and doing all kinds of different amazing. But things. you know what's interesting? I mean, the way we look at look at this and we say, wow, this is this is this is quite fascinating. The mixed marriage, the different locations and stuff. But that's going to be sort of commonplace with my kids' generation, oh, with yeah. our kids' generation. Oh, man. Like, my, you know, my kids are uh, four and almost nine. And, and, you know, you look in their classrooms in the city like Toronto. They're so mixed and diverse. And, yeah, I know. And they, they don't even really notice it. I mean, to, to be frank, I didn't even really know notice it until... The, I was about 15, and I sat in an agent's office, and she said to me, you've got that wonderful ethnic look. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what? What? Right. She's like, ethnic look. You look German. And I was like, ethnic look? What do you mean? And she's like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, Robert De Niro. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah cool, yeah, I'm, I'm down with that. Who could ask me what Robert De Niro is <laughs> running New York City? <laughs> You know, do you, so you know the latest? Uh, I think it's a cover or so of uh, National Geographic has a picture of what uh, the kids will look like at twenty fifty. Yeah, this incredible mix. It's uh, incredible. Yeah. You have to see it. Yeah, I mean, the kids look absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's a, it's a with total... all the different nationalities. You know, yeah. and particularly in North America, you know, because yeah. we're all just immigrants from a certain generation yeah, back. Yeah, sure. right? We're such. I mean, think. I would. I always think about how. How even a hundred years ago in Toronto, it would have been such a big deal for a Catholic and a Protestant to marry. You know, like mm -hmm. it was like a huge big deal. Right. Well, a so, South Asian and and, a, and an Irish and, and, <laughs> Irish from, and an Irish woman <laughs> marrying yeah. thirty years ago yeah. in, in Toronto. <laughs> Are you daft, man? <laughs> Well, we made it, thank God, man. But well, we we're stuck with it. Man. Which is why we got such a great selection of uh, of uh, a cuisine in this city. That's true. It, it, yeah, we got right. It is. Yeah, for sure. Well, I came across a picture of our, of our family in 1921 the other day, mm -hmm. and we looked like we robbed banks. <laughs> I really, honest to God, it looked like something out of Bonnie and Clyde, the whole family. <laughs> Kentucky's finest. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Rule and the Big Time, uh, the latest CD is called uh, Hollywood Boulevard. The CD release is May 9th at 8.30 p.m. Uh, at uh, the Hughes Room, 2261 Dundas Street West. Special guest, American blues legend and alligator recording artist. I like that. Alligator recording oh. artist, Curtis Salgado. A real pleasure meeting you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Right, great to see you, buddy. Come yeah, back again, and we'll Thanks, make sure man. we have some more of those chocolates from Frank's Kitchen. Oh, man, I, I got to come down off these now, man. I got to go to a treatment program. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> it's the Masters Weekend. <laughs> Coming up from uh, TSN Television, TSN Radio, Mark Zucchino will chat to us about 